All right, what's going on, everybody? So I want to give you guys this quick word of encouragement. And so as you can tell from the title, I am addressing people that are working hard or trying to work hard or that are lazy. And I want to give this word because I feel like I have sufficient authority as well as I've, if you follow me over the last couple of years, have seen some of my example. And I don't say this, again, just to begin this video in any arrogant prideful way. I'm not here pounding my chest and saying, oh, look how awesome I am. You should uh, do it my way or whatever it is. But just like in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, when Paul addresses uh, that church, he's talking about the example that he is setting. And he's uh, talking specifically to people for which they are conducting themselves in a disorderly manner and that many people are just busy bodies. They're not really adding value to the kingdom and doing kingdom work. And so I say this because if you've just seen any of my recent videos or the last uh, few months for which I've been uh, expanding to other platforms, uh, namely in TikTok and Instagram, uh, as well as I've been doing more videos on this channel in the shorts, uh, and I've just been posting, you know, almost daily, if if not, um, you know, if, if I haven't been banned or censored, I've always been consistently posting with the exception of some seasons for which God has given me some rest or he's uh, showed me to uh, post uh, less frequently. And so I obey that. But the one thing that the Lord has called me to is this social media slash Christian influencer ministry. And by his grace, he's allowed it to grow. But one thing that I've done is that I've, in, in my best efforts, stepped up to the calling. And whether you agree with me or not, a lot of you know people are in support. A lot of people just um, you know find me repulsive in many ways, but yet they continue to listen. Regardless of where you stand, one thing that is very objectively consistent that many people will admit is that, man, even though I don't like him and agree with him, he sure is very consistent. He's a very tough grinder. He posts. He says this. I don't know how much work it entails behind the scenes, but just look at the fruit in that he's posting. And some people even go as far as admitting, man, I wish I could do more. I don't, you know, agree or like or whatever it is, but I wish I can do more just like uh, this guy. And of course, I'm not here just to showcase my whole life. There's a lot of stuff, obviously, that's outside of the few hours a day that you see of this video or these videos that uh, encompass my life. I sleep, I rest, I do many other things behind closed doors. And there are many things for which the Lord does not want to me to publicly come out with. And so I don't say this in any arrogance, like, oh, look at me, I'm just such a efficient, robotic, just, uh, you know, outcome oriented guy who just does all these things. And I'm so productive in life. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that if, if anything, as much as I've desired with the urgency with the sense of just uh, love and outreach that I have to want to be able to make an impact on the kingdom. I've wanted to do this in the best possible manner. And of course, God is growing me. He's changing me throughout this process. It's, it's a process called sanctification. But for many people, you're not doing this. You're just, as Paul says, uh, conducting yourself and walking in a disorderly manner. Many people say things they desired in their heart, but their actions are far from their words and their thoughts and their uh, desires. And so I say this because many people in this hour, you've been called, you've been given a mantle, you've been given big responsibility, but you haven't seen fruit, you haven't seen uh, results, you haven't been uh, impacting people because you have not stepped up to that. And I encourage you to really think about this for a second. A lot of non-Christians out there they're sitting there, they're giving their pep talks and their you know, motivational speech, uh, speeches, life coaches, productivity hacks, all these things. And they're doing so much for the world. Literally, their 24 hours is way different than your 24 hours. And with all the emphasis and the desire to make a change, they're doing, they're doing so many things for the world. But yet many Christians are not stepping up. Many Christians are not desiring to do what God has stewarded you to do. And I'm not here to say that you need to have 100,000 followers and you need to have, you know, 50 videos a day and like you have to do all these different things. What I'm saying is how are you redeeming your time? God, he gives you stewardship over everything. If you think about life, your time, your health, your wealth, your talents, your giftings, your, the people, the flock that you have over you, anything in life is a stewardship that God has given you. And you have to realize, just like the parable of the talents, are you going to be that guy for which you're going to just uh, dig up the ground and put your talent in the ground? And then when the master comes, he rebukes you and says, 
you lazy, you wicked and lazy servant, right? Take this talent and give it to the guy who has 10 talents. And I say this because for everybody, it's to each their own, right? Nobody, no, I'm not better because I have more reach or whatever. I'm not, you know, uh, more productive and more efficient. There's so many people that people don't see. Their impact may be, you know, less people or they may be doing different things, but the redemption of their time, the way they steward every moment they have, they're sowing to the spirit. They're sowing for kingdom purposes. They're not sowing to the flesh. And I say this as a word of rebuke in some sense, as a word of exhortation, however you want to take it, whether you look at my life the last couple of years and say, man, this guy is doing various things. And again, I'm not trying to call attention to myself. I'm saying with what I've done, I have sufficient authority to say, just like Paul, he's saying, look at me, the example I set you. He literally says that he's not arrogant in the way he's giving the example of how he set his life. He, he was showcasing to them, listen, we work, we toil. He says he, wor he toils night and day. He was laboring hard. Paul was the overachiever of that day. He literally worked his tail off. He was making money for himself, right? And you can literally read the chapter. He was going out. He was doing ministry. He was outreaching. He was doing apostolic stuff. He was doing so many different things. And he literally took his 24 hours and he said, there's so much that I've got to do. There's so much in this small life that I have that is so urgent in the sense of outreach, reaching people, the gospel message that compared to eternity. And he knew, he understood perspective. When he was going to go to heaven, he knew that in that 80 years, 100 years, whatever it is, that he had to do all that he could because time was short. The, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And so even Paul, as he's giving his example and saying, and, and not in any egotistical, narcissistic manner, he was saying, this is the example that I've set. And I want you guys to see that as much as we're working hard, as much as we're doing all these different things, be encouraged. Uh, be uh, um, uh, rebuked in a sense, but give, receive this as exhortation to go out and you see our example and do your thing. Don't leech off of other people and burden them and, and do these different things, but work hard for yourself, make money for yourself, but also go out and do what God has called you to do. Many people, they're leeches. They conduct themselves in a disorderly manner. Many people, they are inefficient, ineffective. Uh, they do things. You, you have to be tactical and strategic in how you set, set your life uh, goals up, right? You wake up at a certain time. You go to sleep at a certain time. You get certain rest. And, and again, I'm not one to work on you know four hours a day. I have my uh, time where I need to rest. I need to heal. I need to be rejuvenated. I, have, I know my, myself and my capacity, my capability. And I'm not here to say that I'm much more effective than anybody else, but I'm saying to each their own. And as you stretch yourself, as you set mini goals, as you set, I don't know, New Year's resolutions, whatever it is, those people that are doing those productivity hacks, those life, uh, you know, coaching things, and, and they're non Christian, right? They're doing all these things and they're effectively managing their time boxing, their journaling, whatever, whatever that is. They're using godly things for which they want to obtain efficiency, effectiveness maximizing their life. They're doing things and they're not even Christian. And yet they're outperforming you. They're doing more, contributing more to the world than many Christians, Many, even many of you watching. A lot of you have been watching for years and you have wanted to start your ministry. You wanted to grow deeper. You wanted to uh, learn, you know, and wh whatever it is. And again, I'm not trying to be results oriented. How are you stewarding your time? How are you sowing to the spirit? Even if you're praying, you're you're exercising that muscle and trying to get a deeper, closer relationship with him. The point is that everybody is stewarded and given 24 hours a day. They're given one talent, five talents, 10 talents. And for you to sit there and conduct yourself in a disorderly manner, just cycle after cycle, you're in bondage, you're in sin, you're doing uh, things to your flesh. Nothing has changed over the years. And yet you're seeing myself growing on you know, Instagram, many other places. You're seeing other uh, evangelists. You're seeing other pastors and ministers. You're seeing uh, lay workers. You're seeing all these uh, people doing much more for the kingdom because they chose to step up and say, you know what? Enough is enough. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And I want to be able to uh, obtain and run this race and get the reward, right? And again, it's not about that for yourself. But as you're doing it for kingdom purposes and you are giving glory and honor to God, because how good is the good news? How good is it that you want to train people up and disciple people? How good is it that you uh, contribute to society in some way, right? Positive ways. All these things are out there for your choosing. But because you choose and you desire to uh, take up 
you know, desires for your flesh. And again, I'm not going to call out certain activities, but you sit there for three, four hours, you enjoy yourself doing X, Y, Z activity, and yet you uh, regret in hindsight, man, I should not have done that this whole day. I should have been more effective and efficient in the way I use my time. So I say this because just like Paul in Second Thessalon- Thessalonians 3, he's exhorting He's showing by example, as much as I'm doing this, I'm not tired. I mean, again, I have to balance my energy and all that stuff, but I'm not sick of this. I'm not here uh, complaining about this ministry. I'm doing hard work for the Lord. And again, there's other things I have to work on, right? I have to uh, increase my effectiveness in other areas of my life. And the Lord is teaching me and I have to repent and I have to continue uh, working that out. But in this area, publicly, as you see it, Man, this dude posts, this dude does a lot of different things. How much more can you do? A lot of people, they just go about Sunday. You know what? I just did my thing a little bit, two hours on Sunday, and that's it. And then you go Monday through Saturday. You do whatever you want for yourself, right? And there are many more people. They're doing much more even than me. They're praying harder. They're doing, uh, they're fasting. They're doing so many things, more than me. But yet, for this little bit that I can show you, this is way more. And as a word of encouragement, shows you as an example that it's it's possible. Many people, they think, oh man, I'm tapping out. I, I don't have energy. I can't do it. The Lord can give you the energy. The Lord can give you that boost. The Lord, if you have a close relationship with him, all of that comes and flows through the spirit and you can just do it. You, you literally can do it. And yes, it's tough. Yes, it's, you know, there's things you got to learn, but it's easy in the presence of God. And I'm here to give you this as a warning, right? Just like how Paul gave the warning. Many of us in this hour, you're getting outplayed by non-Christians. You're getting outplayed by other people who have maybe less experience, less life knowledge. They're younger, whatever it is. But these people, they're doing things. But for you, you're not choosing to do it. And for other people, you're doing a lot. I know many people that are uh, high achievers or whatever you want to call it. You're doing a lot of things and you have a lot going for you. And you're watching me just in conjunction with everything you're doing. I know many people, you have your own uh, ministries, channels, or whatever you, whatever uh, outreach you have. And a lot of you have a far big uh, platform, bigger than me. But you're watching and you're realizing, okay, man, another guy, another brother in Christ doing the same thing, fighting the good fight. So I say this to exhort you and to really get a grip on your life. Get a grip on your 24 hours. Get, get a grip on what you've been stewarded with and look into 2023 and say to yourself, man, am I being a good steward of what God has given me? Because I could be doing better. I could always be growing, right? And again, this doesn't mean more output, but how do you redeem every moment, every chance that you have, right? So think about it. Pray about it, guys. Be encouraged. Love you guys. A lot more to come. Talk to you guys very soon.